Aber jetzt bin ich in diesem äh, ultimativen Ding drin hier. Ich habe keine Ahnung, aber ich habe jetzt einfach mal ultimatives Simbrick eingegeben. I don't know. Mal gucken. Somehow we've made it to 2022, which means that I've been making sim racing videos on the internet for over a year now. So I think it's time for a fresh new update. In this video, I'll be putting together my brand new 2022 sim racing setup. And if anything featured here catches your eye, all gear will be linked in the video description. Ich mach mal einen wilden Guess. Ich mach wirklich einen wilden Guess. Wir verbauen Fun Attack. Ihr dürft auch raten. Was, was wird verbaut? Was wird verbaut in 2022? Ogiers? Mosa. Thrustmaster DD, Fun Attack, Mosa, Thrustmaster. Okay, gucken wir mal. Was wird denn verbaut? Starting off, this is the space I have available. It's not massive, but it's enough to fit a decent size rig. What? Wie nicht massive? Wow. Schön. Richtig schöne Wand. The painting on the wall also looks pretty nice on video. For my new cockpit, I finally transitioned to an aluminum. Oh! Nein! Okay. We lost a brazo. We lost a brazo. Oh. Monitor am Rig dran. Mm, das würde mir persönlich nicht so gefallen. Aber persönlich Präferenz. Profile Rig with the brand new Track Racer TR120, which is an absolute unit. Sticking with the black and red color theme, I also went with Track Racer's recline seat, which features red accents and stitching. My favorite part about this cockpit is that it is compatible with Track Racer's quad monitor mount, which attaches directly onto the aluminum chassis. This not only clears up a ton of space, since I no longer need a freestanding monitor stand, but it also looks like a full-blown transformer once everything is attached. Das würde ich, also das TR 120 würde ich auch gerne mal bauen, um zu gucken, wie so die, die Einstellmöglichkeiten sind da dran. For those of you wondering, a full review on the TR 120 will be coming out very, very shortly, so stay tuned for that. We're not done with the cockpit quite yet. This is because I've also decided to place a floor mat under it all, but of course not just any regular one. This is Track Racer's premium floor mat, which comes with integrated RGB lights. Sure, it might not be necessary, but okay. Also, this is gerade a Track Racer Werbe video. Tell me, it doesn't look crazy. Da fehlen aber noch zwei, drei Matten unten drunter. Lifting the entire cockpit up in order to place this underneath was a bit of a hassle to say the least, and thankfully I didn't even try to record it. Next up, I figured I'll start by placing down my computer. I placed it in this exact location for three very specific reasons. First, it'll be visible on camera, and I want it to be, because I think it looks cool. Second, it's close enough to everything so that I won't have any issues with plugging stuff in. And probably the most important reason is that at this very exact angle, I could cable manage everything without the cables being visible on camera. But I'll talk more about this in a little bit. In my previous setup, I used three 40-inch screens. However, I actually decided to go back with the triple 27s. The exact reasons as to why aren't that important for this video, but I may talk about that in the future. At this point, my main goal is to get all three screens okay. mounted properly. For any of you who have ever done this, you know it's a bit of a hassle and requires a lot of patience, but eventually I got the screens perfectly mounted. I also went ahead and attached a smaller 24-inch display on the top, which will be displaying telemetry data. Of course, I couldn't forget about the good old butt kicker that I was able to attach underneath the TR120 with the proper mount. For the pedals, I'm attaching the CRP pedals by Moza Racing. Okay, good man. Oh, I don't know if you have like about them, but regardless, they're the best ones I had access to at the time. They do look very nice though, so I can't complain. The very heavy Moza Racing R16. Oh, good man. Good man. Good, good chat. If we sind gerettet. Es ist kein Fun Attack geworden. Director of Wheelbase, what's up next? If there is something that is really gonna test the limits of this cockpit, it is this wheelbase. But I'll talk about that in the review. Of course, then I also had to attach the Moser Racing wheel rim. Again, a stunning looking bit of gear. One of the pieces of hardware that I was most excited to mount on my new setup was the Hurricane Wind Simulator by Sim Racing Studio. I'll be speaking all about it in a completely different video, but I figured I'd show a bit of the. Das gibt's mittlerweile fertig zu kaufen? Echt jetzt? Oh! 
install here since it pertains to this. Oh, that's cool. Mounting everything was a breeze, mainly thanks to the aluminum profile of the rig, and I couldn't be happier with how this wind simulator looks when attached. From the side profile, it looks absolutely ridiculous that's cool. in a good way. Kommt ja mehr Wind, wenn man fährt. Genau. Heute, das äh, liest die Daten von SimHub aus und dann kriegst du, je nachdem, wie schnell du fährst, äh, ein bisschen äh, Luft ins Gesicht geblasen. For the shifter and handbrake, I had to stick to my roots and go with the TH-80 shifter and Sparco Rally handbrake from Thrustmaster. And by sticking to my roots, I mean it's the only handbrake and H-pattern shifter I had at the moment. Regardless, I am still very happy with them. Of course then, it was time for the most time-consuming part of all, and something all sim racers can relate to. Cable management! Uh. The notorious cable management. The play of the game here was my brilliant idea to attach a power strip on top of the monitor stand and behind the monitors. This mm. allowed me to hide nearly all of the cables behind- Ja, das habe ich mir auch gedacht. Ich habe mir auch gedacht, so schön hinter den Monitor verstecken. Und dann habe ich rausgefunden, dass ich scheiß 500 Meter Kabel verlegen muss an meinem- Sim Racing Rig und dann habe ich irgendwann festgestellt, scheiße, du brauchst ja noch eine Steckdosenleiste und dann waren es auf einmal drei Steckdosenleisten, A8 ah, so eine Dinger plus drei USB Hubs und irgendwann stellt sich raus, ach scheiße, ach scheiße, das sind ja so viele Kabel, Mann, das sieht immer noch aus wie Spaghetti, oh. Behind the screens and limit as much as possible the cables hanging down to reach my PC. Mm. Talking about my PC, as I alluded to before, I placed it in this exact angle so that I could hide all of the cables behind it and at the perfect position so they wouldn't be visible on camera. I also routed all of the butt kicker and shifter and handbrake cables through the side of the TR120 in the most discreet way possible. And finally, dozens and dozens of hours later, we were finally ready. Ready to set up and configure all of the software, of course. Das hat er an einem Tag gemacht? This involved tinkering with Windows 10 to properly configure all of the screens, setting up the so And be just around. My hands! Ah! Software for the wind simulator, <laughs> playing around with sim. Oh, it's just sogar noch I oh, it's just sogar noch Infinity. Oh my god, es tut mir leid. Bruder, es tut mir so leid, du bist sogar noch an diesen Scheiß gebunden. Oh god, es tut mir wahnsinnig leid. Oh, ich fühle deinen Schmerz. Ich fühle deinen Schmerz, Mann. Oh. To configure the butt kicker and the telemetry display and a few other things. And only after all of that was I finally, finally ready. Ja, das hat dann schon, ey, deine Grafikkarte und dein Triple Screen einrichten hat länger gedauert, als dein Rig zu bauen, das weiß ich. <lacht> to go find some headphones because I forgot <lacht> that these screens don't have any speakers. Anyways, here is the complete build. Enjoy, and of course, thanks for watching. Das ist wirklich schön geworden. Das ist wirklich hübsch geworden. Das ist wirklich ein schönes Rig geworden. Tatsächlich. Thanks for the video. Uh, video.